Muslims cheer when Zakir Naik quotes the book of John, chapter 5, verse 30. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. Nike doesn't bother to give the context of the verse, but he offers it as a proof text against the deity of Christ and the doctrine of the Trinity. Obviously, if you're reading the verse as Zacher Nike reads it, Jesus sounds like he's saying that he doesn't have the power to do anything. I can of my own self do nothing! So, according to Zacher Nike, Jesus' words in the book of John, chapter 5, verse 30, Prove that he's just a man, a helpless human being, certainly not God. You can learn a lot about a man by considering how he reads the Bible. What can we learn about world-famous Muslim apologist Zakir Naik from his treatment of John 5.30? Let's find out by doing something that people like Zakir Naik don't want their listeners to do ever. We're going to read the passage. I'll just summarize the first 15 verses of the chapter. Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath, and this upsets the Jewish leaders. They regard miraculously healing someone as work, and you're not allowed to work on the Sabbath. We'll pick up the story in verse 16 of the chapter Zakir Knight quotes to show that Jesus is just a helpless human being. And this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My Father is working until now, and I am working. Uh-oh. You see, Jews weren't allowed to work on the Sabbath. But there was a discussion among the Jewish rabbis. They reasoned that since God sustains the universe even on the Sabbath, God works on the Sabbath. Jews don't get to work on the Sabbath, but God works on the Sabbath. How does Jesus answer the Jewish leaders when they complain that he's working on the Sabbath? He says, my father is working until now, and I am working, like father, like son. Now, what does he sound like he's saying here? If Jesus says, yeah, I know human beings aren't supposed to work on the Sabbath, but God the Father is working on the Sabbath, so I'm working on the Sabbath too, because I'm the Son, what does he sound like he's claiming? He sounds like he's claiming to be in the same category with God. And as the next verse shows, that's exactly what the Jewish leaders thought he was saying. Look at the heading, by the way. Verse 18, this was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. In the Bible, people or groups of people can be children of God in various ways. We're all children of God in the sense that God created all of us. This is the basis for Ahmed Didat's Sons by the Tons response. Oh, you claim that Jesus is the Son of God, but God has lots of sons in the Bible. Yeah, there are lots of sons of God in the Bible, but the phrase Son of God is used in different ways. The question is, what does the phrase Son of God mean when it's applied to Jesus? Does it mean something more than when it's applied to me? In this passage, Jesus is claiming to be the Son of God in a unique way. When he says that the Father is working on the Sabbath, so he's working on the Sabbath, the complaint is that he's calling God his own Father, making himself equal with God. Notice, the Jews thought that Jesus was claiming to be a separate God, a separate deity. He's the Son, who's equal with God, but who can act on his own, separate from the Father. But Christianity doesn't teach that Jesus is a separate God, so someone is misunderstanding something here. Now, if Muslims are right, and Jesus is a mere human being and a Muslim prophet, he's going to correct their misunderstanding by saying, Wait, you think I'm claiming to be equal with God? I'm not claiming to be equal with God, I'm only human, just like the rest of you. 
But if Christians are right, and Jesus is the divine Son, who has the nature and attributes of God, and who is one with the Father, he's going to correct their misunderstanding by saying, wait, you think I'm claiming to be a separate God? I'm not claiming to be a separate God. Yes, I'm God, but I don't act on my own. Everything I do comes from the Father because I'm one with the Father. Let's see what Jesus does. Verse 19. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord. Oh no, Christians! Jesus says that he can do nothing of his own accord. That sounds very similar to verse 30, where Jesus declares, I can of my own self do nothing! But wait a minute. When Jesus says that he can do nothing of his own accord, does he mean that he's a helpless human being? Or does he mean that he can't do anything separately from the Father because he's one with the Father? Let's at least read the entire verse before we decide. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. Jesus does whatever the Father does? What mere human being, what mere prophet would say, everything that God does, I do too. So, when Jesus says, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, is he claiming to be a mere human being, or is he claiming to be the divine Son who's one with the Father and therefore can't do anything separately from the Father? Let's keep reading. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing, and greater works than these will he show him, so that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. If the Father raises the dead, so does the Son. Why? Because, as Jesus said, whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. Like Father, like Son. Let's continue. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. Red alert! Red alert! Theological red alert, Jesus says that the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. But according to the Old Testament, God is the final judge. In chapter 3 of the book of the prophet Joel, God declares that the nations will be gathered and that he will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. The Quran also claims that God is the final judge. In Surah 22, verse 56, Allah declares, The sovereignty on that day, the day of judgment, will be that of Allah, the one who has no partners. He will judge between them. Allah is the final judge, according to Islam. But Jesus says that the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. There are two possibilities here. Either the Bible and the Quran are wrong and God isn't the final judge because he's handed all judgment over to a helpless human being, or God is indeed the final judge because Jesus is God, and within the nature of the one God, the Father has given all judgment to the Son. But why would the Father give all judgment to the Son? Jesus tells us. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Father and Son are one, but the Father hands all judgment over to the Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Tell me, do we honor mere human beings the same way we honor the Father? Of course we don't. Do we honor human prophets the same way we honor the Father? Absolutely not. What is the only possible basis for honoring the Son just as we honor the Father? The only way we would honor the Son just as we honor the Father is if the Son has the same nature and attributes as the Father. Side note, 
Where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? Common question from Muslims. But notice, Jesus says that all human beings must honor the Son just as we honor the Father. One of the ways we honor the Father is through worship. Jesus says that we have to honor the Son in the same way. What happens if we don't? The verse continues. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Do Muslims honor the Son? Does Zakhar Naik honor the Son? According to Jesus, since they don't honor the Son, they dishonor the Father. And this is the chapter that Muslims go to in order to prove that Jesus was just a human prophet of Islam? This chapter condemns them. But there's more, Jesus declares. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Wait a minute. Jesus is the one who raises the dead? I wonder if he simply means that he raises particular people when he performs miracles. Because if he means that he raises the dead at the resurrection, we're going to have another theological red alert. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Ha! You see there, David, Jesus calls himself the Son of Man. This means he's claiming that he's a mere human being. So let's ignore everything else he says and go with that. Yeah, that works as long as you completely ignore the fact that the title Son of Man, as Jesus uses it, is a divine title for a particular Son of Man that the prophet Daniel sees in a vision. Do yourself a favor, Muslims and read Daniel chapter 7, where the entire world serves the Son of Man who comes on the clouds of heaven. At his Jewish trial, the Jewish leaders convicted Jesus of blasphemy for calling himself the Son of Man who comes with the clouds of heaven. They understood what that title meant. Muslims don't. But don't take my word for it. Read the book of Mark chapter 14, verses 61 through 64. For once in your lives, my Muslim friends, try to understand what Jesus is actually saying instead of forcing the views of an illiterate 7th century caravan robber onto him. Even here in John 5, the chapter Zakhar Knight quotes to prove that Islam is true, the Son of Man is the final judge. And the Quran claims that God is the final judge. You can get this. Almost done. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming. When all who are in the tombs will hear his voice, whose voice? The voice of Jesus, who is, according to this passage, the Son of God and the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. Red alert! Red alert! Theological red alert, Jesus just claimed that he's the one who raises the dead, all the dead, at the resurrection. According to the Old Testament, who raises the dead at the resurrection? 1 Samuel 2.6 The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. According to the Quran, who raises the dead at the resurrection? Surah 22, verse 7. And surely the hour is coming, there is no doubt about it. And certainly Allah will resurrect those who are in the graves. And yet Jesus claims that he's the one who will raise everyone from the dead. Are these the teachings of a man who thinks he's a mere human being, just a prophet of God? 
And now for the very next verse, the verse Zakir Naik, he's a medical doctor, quotes to Muslims to show Muslims that even the Bible agrees with Islam. John chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus says, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Now that we've read the passage, let's go ahead and have a pop quiz. When Jesus says, I can do nothing on my own, I seek not my own will, is he saying, A, I'm a helpless human being, a simple prophet of Allah, or B, when I claimed to be the divine son of God, you Jewish leaders thought I was claiming to be a separate God who acts on his own. But I'm here to correct you. Even though I have the same nature and attributes that the Father has, and even though I'm the final judge of all people and the one who raises the dead, I do not act on my own. I cannot act on my own. I can do nothing on my own because I'm not a separate God. I'm one with the Father. Which one is Jesus saying? And yet Zucker Nike rips Jesus' words completely out of context, twists their meaning beyond recognition, and convinces his gullible listeners that Jesus, in John chapter 5, agrees with Muslims. And the Muslims, who are being deceived by Zucker Nike, cheer for him as he lies to them. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing! Why do Islam's most popular speakers and apologists constantly lie about Jesus in order to deceive their listeners? That's the spirit of Islam, my friends. And if you don't believe me that the spirit of Islam is the spirit of deception, sit down with your Muslim friends and show them this video. Show them that Jesus is clearly claiming to be the divine son of God throughout the passage, and that Zakir Naik completely, utterly, totally distorts the meaning of the passage when he rips verse 30 out of context. 99 times out of 100, your Muslim friends won't care. They won't care that Zakir Naik is lying about Jesus, as long as Zakir Naik continues doing something far more important convincing Muslims not to question Islam. Hopefully, you'll sit down with the one out of a hundred who does care, the one who's better than his religion calls him to be, the one who hates deception. If you sit down with him and show him how Muslim apologists constantly, endlessly lie about Jesus, he will soon be on his way out of Islam.